I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Galatians chapter 6 this morning. We are continuing uh, unpacking God's truth for our lives and relationships found in this fantastic final chapter of Galatians. As followers of Jesus, we are to live one another lives. We are to look not only to our own interests, but also to the interests of others, especially the interests of our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We get the joy and privilege to join God in his work in one another's lives. We get to bless and be blessed. We get to comfort and be comforted. We get to encourage and be encouraged. We get to forgive and be forgiven. We get to love and be loved. We get to serve and be served because we're family in Jesus. And this is what Paul has been sharing with us. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, Paul wrote these words, brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual, restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourselves so that you also won't be tempted. When a brother or sister in Christ is overtaken in sin, we who are spiritual, we who are walking by the Spirit in humble dependence upon the Lord, we are the ones who are to restore them. We're to go help pick them up spiritually so that they can get back into a proper position with God and with us. As we shared last Sunday, we restore one another righteously by the help of the Spirit of God living within us according to the truth of God's Word. When we see and are led by the Spirit that a brother or sister's life or their words or their actions are in opposition to the Word of God and disobedience to God, we are to restore them. We restore them righteously according to the truth of God's Word. We're to restore one another gently. A gentle spirit is the right spirit to go to a brother or sister who is caught in sin when we're going to restore them. Gentleness is the grace, love, and kindness of Christ in action through us into one another's lives. And then we restore one another humbly. As we go to restore our brother and sister in Christ who has been caught and overtaken in sin, we do so humbly. We keep watch over ourselves. We keep a close eye on ourselves so that we too don't get caught in the trap of sin. Some days we are the ones to restore. Some days we are the ones to be restored. And so we understand spiritual restoration is a blessing for all of us. As David the psalmist said in Psalm 32 and verse 1, how joyful is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. When we confess our sins to God, he forgives us, he cleanses us, he restores us, and he continues his work in and through us. And what a blessing this is to us as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We are blessed to have forgiveness in Jesus. Praise God for our forgiveness in Jesus. Amen? What a blessing. And so Paul now continues in verse 2, carry one another's burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. The transition from verse 1 to verse 2 is important. Verse 2 actually allows us to carry on the blessing from verse 1 in one another's lives. It allows us to carry this blessing on. And so we see that we must carry one another's burdens. And in so doing, we fulfill the law of Christ. It's so important for us to walk in obedience to this verse because we know that our enemy Satan will not stop in his attempts to tempt us and lure us into sin and in particular into the sin that had previously overtaken us. And so now that we finish verse one, now that we have helped restore our brother or sister in Christ, now that our brother or sister in Christ is no longer caught in sin, 
We are to help them stay firm in their faith and resist sin. In essence, verse 1, now that we've helped pick up our brother or sister in Christ spiritually, verse 2, we are now to help them stay up spiritually. We've picked them up, verse 1, and now we're to help them stay up, verse 2, in regards to their walk with the Lord. Because we know our enemy never stops in his attempts to lure us into sin, and in particular we know our enemy will especially target those sins that we had previously been overtaken in, and now we've been restored. And so we understand, and I think maybe for you, you can think back in your life, I know in mine, oftentimes, we are most prone and susceptible to sin and temptation after a spiritual victory or restoration. After a victory in the Lord or a restoration by the Lord. So Paul understood this. So here's what he said. In essence, this is what he's saying. We do not restore one another and walk away from one another. We are not to be restored by one another and walk away from one another because we need one another. Paul wrote, carry one another's burdens. Carry means literally to bear, to pick up. It means to take on oneself, to take up, to pick up, to, to take on oneself. Carry in verse 2, like restore in verse 1, is a present active imperative. It's a command for us to obey every day, throughout the day, all day, by the power of the Spirit at work in us. It's not a suggestion for us to consider. The command to carry, like the command to restore, doesn't come with a time limit. There's no time limit. So we know we are to restore one another day by day, as long as it's called today by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us as we talk with, as we pray with and for our brothers and sisters in Christ until they're restored. We also are to carry one another's burdens day by day, as long as it's called today by the Spirit's power, as long as our brother or sister in Christ needs our help. And so we continue to carry and we restore. These two commands, restore and carry, we're able to obey these commands as we walk by the Spirit. Again, it's not in us and our strength and wisdom that we're going to carry one of those burdens. It's in the Lord's power at work in and through our lives. Paul said, carry one another's. One another is another reference to our brothers and sisters in Christ. So again, as we saw in verse 1, this is family talk between brothers and sisters in Christ. This is our family talk. This is how we relate to one another's family, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are to carry one another's burdens. Burden literally means a heavy weight. A weight too heavy to bear alone. It means to be pressed down by this weight. This burden is, is pressing down on us. Years ago, before Cog called me into the ministry, I was coaching uh, basketball, and I made a really bad decision one day. And because I was coaching, I had the keys to the uh, weight room, I had the keys to the gym, and I decided uh, I was going to go ahead and, and get in and get in the weight room and get my workout in uh, before I had to get to practice later that afternoon. And I made the mistake of going in there by myself not having a fellow coach, not having my teammate, not having a buddy in there to work out with me, a partner. I went there by myself. And so I was working out, and I was hitting the bench, and I felt really good. And uh, I was hit my number. I wanted to do eight reps, and I got the eight reps up, and I thought to myself, man, I am feeling good today. I'm going to go ahead and push and see if I can get to 10. And that was a really bad decision. Because as I pushed that weight to try to get to 10, I realized, uh-oh, as that bench and all that weight sank down onto my chest. That weight, trust me, was pressing down on me. And I remember it to this day 
Because I looked and I realized, oh, I did this alone. I don't have anybody in here. And so I struggled and struggled and struggled. And I was somehow, Lord strength, I was able to, to lean and to turn in such a way as the weight on the barbell was able to, to take the hold and it fell off on one side, which allowed me then to push the weight on over and off of me. And I was able to just sit there for a few moments, thanking the Lord and asking for his forgiveness for my stupidity. That was a heavy weight. That was a weight too heavy for me to bear alone. That was a weight that was pressing down on me and causing me great hurt and great harm, and it was potentially going to be even worse than that. Burdens in this verse, within the context, includes the struggle to resist going back into the sin that had previously overtaken us. Burdens includes our struggle with the consequences that have resulted from being overtaken in the sin. Burdens include the guilt, shame, and disappointment Satan piles on us even after God's forgiven and restored us from being overtaken in the sin. Burdens includes the struggle for us to forgive ourselves rather than loathing ourselves because we gave into the sin and got caught in it to begin with. Burdens also include the other struggles, challenges, difficulties that we deal with as followers of Jesus Christ. Many times the burdens deal with broken relationships. Many times the, deal, the burdens deal with the, the fallout from our relationships with people in conflict or broken people, broken relationships. Maybe it's unwanted circumstances. Whatever the burdens, what Paul is saying is they're too heavy for us to bear alone, which is why he gave us the command carry one another's burdens. Paul said the same thing in Romans chapter 15. He said, we who are strong have an obligation to bear the weaknesses of those without strength, not pleasing ourselves. We build up one another. We bless one another as we bear, carry, and take up upon ourselves one another's burdens. And Paul says, carry one another's burdens in this way as we carry one of those burdens, you will fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is to love one another as Christ has loved us. That's the law of Christ. Paul summarized it in chapter 5 and verse 14. Look at chapter 5 and verse 14. Before we even made our way into this passage, he said in 5 and verse 14, for the whole law, and we know the emphasis on the law and versus grace throughout Galatians. We know about that in chapters 1 through 4. He said, for the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, love your neighbor as yourself. Remember, Paul's telling them, we are free in Jesus. We just finished singing about this. We're free in Jesus. And that means we are free to live for Jesus, but it also means we are free to love like Jesus. We're free. We are unleashed in Christ Jesus to love like Jesus. But what happens is we got these burdens that restrict us and press down on us and keep us from being able to live for Jesus and love like Jesus. And so Paul says, carry one of those burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. As we carry one of those burdens, we obey God, we please God, and we love one another. One of the most powerful ways you can love one another, your brothers and sisters in Christ, is to carry their burdens. One of the most personal ways you can love a brother or sister in Christ is to carry their burdens with them. One of the most important ways we love one another is to carry one of those burdens with one another. And so God has clearly brought us together. This is the truth. He's brought us together. So I know this is where we're at. This is where I'm at. This is where you're at. And I don't know what from, from what perspective, but I know 
God is speaking to us, and it is just hitting home with us in many different ways. Some of us need to carry a brother or sister's burden. Some of us need to get the opportunity to carry a brother or sister's burden. Some of us need to share so that we can allow a brother or sister to carry our burden. And so God is preparing us for what he has for us here today in a few moments, this afternoon, this evening, the rest of this week, as he's teaching us this truth. So it's important for us to understand how can we fulfill, verse 2, carry one of those burdens, and this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. How? We see it. We understand it. It's a command. It's beneficial. It involves love. So how? Let's look at some steps that will help us carry one of those burdens. Step one, ask. The first step is ask. Open communication is a must in God's family. It's a must. Ask. We must ask one another about one another's burdens. We ask one another out of our love and care for one another. This is important. Open communication is a must for the health of any and every one of our relationships. If you tell me that you have a relationship and there's not good communication, I'm going to tell you that relationship probably isn't a healthy relationship. It's vitally important for our relationship with God and for one another. Open communication is a must. So that means we have to ask one another about one another's burdens. And we ask out of our love and care for one another because here's one of the main reasons why. When a brother or sister in Christ, and you know this as well as I do, when we are struggling with the weight of a burden that we are carrying, when we are being pressed down, by the weight of a burden that we are carrying, we don't always want to share with others. We don't always know how to share with others and ask for their help. Because many times when we're carrying the weight of a burden, Satan lies to us and he tells us things such as, nobody cares about you. Nobody has time for you. Here's one of his favorites. You should be able to carry your own burden. Why do you need to go and ask anybody else for help carrying your burden? Because you're the one who put yourself in this place in the first place. They don't need to be concerned with your junk. They don't have time. Nor do they have any desire. You see, he doesn't want us to ask one another. He doesn't want us to check in on one another. He doesn't want that. He wants to devour us. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think we read those scriptures in God's word, and at times we kind of just kind of minimize them and go, well, yeah, I mean, I know he's against me, but I'm not quite sure he really wants to steal, kill, and destroy me. No, 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 no. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. You and me. And his lies are designed to push me to the point where he can fulfill his plan, which is to destroy me. And so these steps are of utmost importance. They're so vitally important. So as we ask one another, because we understand what's going on, and because we understand the delicate nature that these are burdens that are too heavy for our brother or sister in Christ to bear alone, we, as we go and ask one another about one of those burdens, we must reassure one another that we love one another, we care for one another, and we want to carry one of those burdens with them. We're there to carry them. We want to join in. Oh, I want to get our hands and feet all in, man. I had a brother in Christ who recently told me, he said, man, he said, Pastor, I said, I got to tell you, this is why I stayed on the sidelines of ministry so long. He was telling me about a situation. He goes, man, it, it's difficult. I don't like it. It's difficult. I said, you're right, but that's also why you're in the game now. I said, ministry's messy because people are messy. We're messy. I'm messy. So let's get involved and let's enjoy the mess together. So we got to make sure our brothers and sisters, as we ask, we reassure them. Second step, we ask. Second step, share. 
We must be careful and prayerful about who we open up to and share our burdens. Hear me, we must be careful and prayerful about who we open up to and share our burdens. Best case scenario is we need to share our burdens with one or a few brothers or sisters in Christ who are spiritual, as he said in verse 1, who are walking by the Spirit in dependence upon the Lord. And then we must share with the trustworthy, say that with me out loud, trustworthy, one more time, trustworthy brother or sister, how we are doing spiritually, humbly and honestly and completely. We need to ask step one. We need to share step two. And we're prayerful and careful about who we share with. And we know and identify as the Lord helps us a trustworthy brother or sister or a couple of or a few trustworthy brothers or sisters that we can go to and and we share with them where we are and what's going on spiritually with us we share with them about that burden honestly and completely and humbly you see we have a responsibility to one another to ask one another and also we have a responsibility to share with one another so that we can help one another so they go Hand in hand. There, there's that first step, but then there's got to be this second step. We share with one another. I love a wonderful principle in counseling, in biblical counseling. It says this, a heart that is well is a heart that tells. A heart that is well is a heart that tells. It is. It's a sign of spiritual health, maturity, and strength to share with one another and to seek help from one another. It is a sign of strength to share with one another and to seek help from one another. Not sharing increases the weight of the burden we're already too weak to carry. Not sharing decreases the opportunity to receive help from a brother or sister. Not sharing pushes us deeper and deeper into the discouragement, the despair, and the danger. Spiritually, that our enemy has planned for us. We ask and we share because we can't bear it alone. We can't. Remember, Satan wants isolation. Satan wants to isolate us from God, God's word, and one another because he doesn't want us to receive help from God, God's word, and one another. So he's constantly trying to isolate us. He's a liar. He's a loser. He's a coward. He's a bully. He isolates us by his lies to us because he wants to devour us. But listen, we have the Spirit of God living within us. We have the Word of God before us, and we've got our brothers and sisters in Christ around us. And we must fill our minds with the Word so that we can understand and so that we can hear from our brothers and sisters in Christ and so that we can share with our brothers and sisters in Christ that we are victors in Christ Jesus, that we're overcomers in Christ Jesus, that we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can run to it and find safety, that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and His ears are open to their cries for help. If we ask, He will hear us and He will respond to us and He will tell us great and unsearchable things that we do not know. No, that we have the Lord and he is our strength and we can be strong in his vast strength, not ours. We know the scriptures. And in those times when Satan is trying to isolate us and when those burdens are too heavy for us to carry, we get isolated and we kind of go blank on those truths. Because we're fighting for everything we've got, but that burden is on us and it's got so heavy that we can't do anything. And we just continue in whatever it is that is causing the hurt and the harm. We must understand, Satan wants isolation. God wants connection. God wants connection. And we stay connected with God as we walk by the Spirit. 
We stay connected with God as we, well, that's how we connect with God. We walk by the Spirit, spending that time with Him. We stay connected with one another as we do life with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. It's much easier to fill, fulfill step one and step two when we're involved with one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Much easier. When we're in those small groups, our life teams, and we're in our discipleship groups and our Bible studies, and even when we're in corporate worship, we have these friendships and relationships. And even when they're not deep friendships and relationships, we still have our brother and sister Christ around us in corporate settings to where we can run and ask and share so that that burden can be lightened, that burden can be lifted. So the first step is ask. Second step is share. The third step is, is listen. Step three is listen. When a brother or sister in Christ shares their burden, our response is of utmost importance. Please understand how important the response is. Notice, Paul did not say, criticize one another's burdens. As if to say, they shouldn't be dealing with this burden. You shouldn't be dealing with this burden. I can't believe this is a burden for you. You shouldn't be dealing with this burden. He didn't say criticize one of those burdens. He didn't, secondly, say gossip about one another's burdens. That means when a brother or sister in Christ shares with you the, the deep burden that they are struggling with, you then go out and you share it with others without their consent. We all know about gossip. It's, it's a sin. It's out of place in God's family. It's the attempt to make self look more while making others look less. Unfortunately, at times, and I rejoice and praise God that doesn't happen here in our church family, but unfortunately it happens within the family of God. I pray it doesn't happen here. If it does, that brother needs to go back to verse 1 and be restored, or that sister. But unfortunately at times it happens within God's family under the guise of prayer. The guys have a prayer request. Someone will go to a brother or sister and they'll say, hey, hey, did you hear? I mean, did you hear about so-and-so? They, this is what they're dealing with. They're struggling with this. I'm shocked. I can't believe they would do this. I heard this and I heard that. And they said this and they said that. And then this person over here came and told me about this and that. And they're dealing with that. And I think it's really bothering them. And I think, I don't know, man, maybe they, they may end up having to, to make some serious decisions here in the future. Oh, yeah, oh, no, by the way, if you have time, pray for them. That's not a prayer request. That's not a prayer request. That's not carrying one of those burdens. Listen, the common rule of thumb you know as well as I do, is if someone will talk about someone else like that to you, that someone will talk about you to someone else in the same way. So when that happens, beware. Go to, chat, go to verse 1 and seek to restore them because they're out of line. Their actions and their words are out of line. See verse 1 and then go to verse 2. But we know that Paul also didn't say ignore one another's burdens. As if it's not our responsibility to carry them. He didn't say, make fun of one another's burdens. Like, I can't believe you are dealing with this. When they come and share a burden with you, he said, don't, don't make fun of the burden. Don't, our response shouldn't be, man, I am shocked. I can't believe, wow, you're really dealing with that? Woo, I would never have guessed that for you. That's not a good response. He said, don't minimize. He didn't say minimize their burdens. He didn't say minimize one of those burdens. What that means is when we act as if it doesn't even rise to the level of a burden, and, and, and really we don't have time to carry that. It's, it's, we just we got other things to do. We don't have time to carry that burden for you because it's really not, it's not something that I believe I, I need to really carry for you. Notice Paul also didn't say run from one another's burdens, which then leaves our brother or sister to deal with the weight of the burden on their own and the struggle on their own. These responses that we've just listed add to one another's burdens. 
And unfortunately, there are times and there are examples of brothers and sisters in Christ who choose not to share with other brothers or sisters in Christ because they've been hurt by a brother or sister in Christ in the past. And so now the enemy has used that hurt from another brother or sister in the past in his plan to isolate them from help in the present and future. And the hurt is real and the pain is real, but it's to be dealt with in a real, Christ-like, authentic, biblical way. And so as our brother, sister in Christ shares their burden with us, we need to listen carefully so that we can understand the weight and the struggle of the burden that they are wrestling with on a day-by-day basis. As our brother or sister in Christ share their burden with us, we need to listen intently with the confidence in knowing that as we listen and seek to understand what's going on with them, we know the Holy Spirit of God who dwells within us will give us the sensitivity, the strength, and the wisdom to respond His way, which leads us to step four, and step four is carry. We ask, we share, we listen, and then step four is we carry. As a brother or sister in Christ shares their burden with us, we listen and we carry, we bear it, we take it up, we pick it up and put it on ourselves in the Lord's strength for the Lord's glory, and we bear it and carry it with them. And we saddle up right next to them. As Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 14, and we exhort you, brothers and sisters, warn the idle, comfort the discouraged, help the weak. Say that with me. Help the weak. Again, help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Carrying one another's burdens allows us to be used by God to help our brother and sister in Christ move closer and closer to spiritual health, to spiritual growth, to spiritual strength, to spiritual maturity. The command to carry one another's burden requires us to spend time with one another so that we can speak into one another, so that we can disciple one another, so that we can help one another, so that we can hold one another accountable. Carrying one another's burden speaks time. And so as we carry one another's burdens, we're not just going to always remain silent. There are times as we carry one another's burdens that silence is the greatest blessing that we can share with our brother or sister in Christ because we're just simply there with them and we're supporting them and we're going to walk with them and they're going to carry that burden with them. But we don't always walk in silence. As we carry one another's burdens, we speak God's truth and love to our brother and sister. As we carry one another's burdens, we speak God's words of encouragement into our brother and sister. As As we carry one of those burdens, we stand firm in our faith beside our brother and sister. As we carry one of those burdens, we pray with them and for them and over them in Christ Jesus on a regular daily basis. As we carry one another's burdens, we persevere and endure in the hard, in the hurtful, in the challenging, in the difficult, in the long. We stay with them and we endure and persevere with them. And as we carry one another's burdens, we pour God's love and God's grace and God's kindness into our brother and sister in Christ Jesus. Listen, carrying one another's burdens is not always easy, it's not always quick, and it's not always convenient, but it's always right. It's always right. Always. And as we carry one another's burdens. This verse too reminds us of some simple truths. As we carry one another's burdens, we are reminded we have a family. First truth, first benefit, first blessing. As we carry one another's burdens, we're reminded we have a family. We're not alone. We're not isolated. There's no reason for us to be isolated. We have a family. We have brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. As we carry one another's burdens, we understand we also not only have a family, we have a purpose. Our purpose is to help one another because we need one another. That's the point throughout chapter six. We've got a purpose. We not only got a family, we got a purpose. We got a, a team and we got a role. We got a role to play. And we're all starters. Nobody's sitting in the bench. Nobody's in the stands. We all got a role to play. You got a role, and I've got a role. That's to carry one of those burdens. And as we carry one of those burdens, we are reminded we have a family, we have a purpose, and we also have a message. 
And the message is the good news of the gospel. That's our message. Our message is we have encouragement, we have healing, we have hope, we have help, we have grace, we have love, we have rest, we have safety, we have strength, we have support, we have understanding, we have victory as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. That's the gospel. And we carry one another's burdens so that we can lighten their load, so that we can get them to Jesus. He's the healer. We're the help. We're the help. He's the healer. We're the help. He's the hope. He's the hope. And so we carry, we bear, we take up one of those burdens. And we walk right beside him, get our brother and sister in Christ. And we start as long as it takes until that burden is completely lightened or lifted by the Lord. And then we continue walking, looking for others that we might be able to come alongside. This is exactly what we read about in Hebrews Chapter 12, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance and endurance the race marked out for us. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, here it is, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. As we think about how Jesus alleviated our burden of sin by his death, burial, and resurrection, we will not grow weary and we will not lose heart when it comes to carrying the burdens of our brothers and sisters in Christ because we are family in Jesus and that's what we do. Let me ask you to bow in prayer. I've asked some of our brothers and sisters to come forward, so I would ask that you would do that now. We've got some brothers and some sisters that are gonna be standing here at the front because God wants us to walk in his word. He always wants us to live what we learn from his word. And so the word today says that we need to carry one of those burdens. So here's the way it's gonna work. Uh, as always, the altar is open for anyone and everyone who wants to come and kneel. But also we've got brothers and sisters standing here up front and they would love to pray with you. They would love to carry their, your burden. If you've in a position this morning where you say, man, pastor, I've got a burden that is bearing down on me as you've described, and I, I just don't have or know anyone who I can share it with, then here's some folks right here. And if these folks get overwhelmed, then we got some more folks that'll come up. And we've got an army of folks who are sitting around you that are ready and willing to help carry burdens, that are really ready and willing to, to ask and to, and to share and to listen and to carry, because I don't want any of us to leave this room any of us to leave this room, continuing to walk in the isolation that our enemy has for us, thinking as if there's no one who cares about us or there's no one who wants to help us because we've got brothers and sisters who are ready to do just that. And so even now, if you want to make your way to pray with one of these brothers or sisters, you can just come up and just share that I've got a burden that I'm carrying. You can be as specific as you want. You can be as general as you want. What they want to do is they want to listen and they want to pray and they want to help carry it. And one of the greatest ways that we can carry a burden for one another is by praying with and for one another. And so that's why they're here and that's what they're ready to do. As the Lord leads, you respond in obedience to him. I also wanna encourage if you've yet to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, that's the greatest decision you can make. And today is always the right day to say yes to Jesus. These folks would love to introduce you to Jesus as well this morning. 
God is speaking, God's working. Listen, if God's sharing someone in your own heart and mind where you're seated and you know they're here, you don't wait. Go and get up and go to them. You can go and carry their burden. You can go pray for them, pray over them. You don't have to wait. You can move right now. The Spirit of God is working. His people are moving. His people are responding. That's what this is about. There's no more, that we don't have any, any more time to walk in isolation. No more time trying to carry heavy weights on our own. It doesn't make sense. Because we're family. And then we're going to continue worshiping the Father through song. But this is your time. This is our time. Move and follow the Spirit's leading. Let's stand and say yes to the Father.